Hey everybody, I'm here with your week four uh, Global One assignment. Uh, for this week, we're going to be taking a jump across the pond. We're gonna be heading back to Europe uh, for this week's lesson. We're gonna be talking about uh, the Industrial Revolution and its beginnings in Europe, because it begins in Europe and it inspires what we do here in America. So as we start talking about Western expansion and people moving West and opportunity, and we begin to talk about things like the railroad, canals, steel workers, factories, uh, inventions in the South, the cotton gin uh, that really makes slavery explode because it allows them to sort of manufacture things faster and there's more of a need for workers. So all of this industrialization leads to um, you know, things being done faster, more efficiently. Um, but there's also a very big downside to it. Um, so <clears throat> as we talk about the expansion of our country and our country growing at this time after the Louisiana Purchase, an important thing to understand is that there's a lot of new inventions coming through. So as we talk about industrialization, it's really important that we start um, in Europe. So that's what we're going to be doing this week is we're going to be looking at the Industrial Revolution and its beginnings in Europe. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get right to it. I will not take up as much of your time this week as I did last week. I did not mean for that video to be as long as it was. So with that, we are right into it here. Um, I hope you guys all had a good weekend, by the way. Um, a wet start to this week here, but uh, looks like some good weather's coming. So uh, a major turning point uh, in history are a lot of breakthroughs that happen in the early to mid 1800s. Okay, you have the first anesthetic, you have the first sewing machine, the speed of light is measured, an antiseptic is invented, and that reduces death during childbirth. So you have <clears throat> the death rate will be going down because you have things like anesthesia, which allows more surgeries to happen, sewing machine, more clothes are able to be made, and this antiseptic that reduces the death rate during childbirth, which means you have more children being born, okay? Um, so the agricultural revolution, okay, the Dutch really lead the way in this and they make many improvements such as earthen dams, they combine small fields to make bigger ones, and they use fertilizer, which allows crops to grow in greater number. And if you're able to grow more crops, that means there's more food to feed people, okay? Uh, the British followed uh, the Dutch with crop rotation. They grew turnips uh, to restore the soil and Jethro Tull, invents the seed machine. Now the seed machine is important because they're able to seed these fields faster. So if you're able to do these things faster, you're able to grow more of it and do more of it. That's what these big advancements are about at this time is that you're able to do more and you're able to grow more crops. Okay, so there's more food for people to eat, which means Theoretically, less people will uh, die of starvation, less people will be hungry, and farmers began to use fences to enclose their land. So again, this leads to a population explosion. The population of Europe rose because the, uh, the decrease in death rates. There's more food, there's better hygiene, and sanitation is impro and improved medical care decreased the risk of an early death. Okay, we talked about when we talked about the French Revolution, the death rate for the lower class, the third estate was very, very high. Many of them didn't even make it to 15 years old. Okay, so we have a lot of advancements at this time. Some of the new technology, Thomas Newcomen uh, developed a steam engine powered by coal in 1712. This is about 100 years before where we are right now, okay? When we talk about being in the early 1800s. James Watt improved on the steam engine in 1769, and a gentleman named Abraham Darby discovered how to improve the strength of iron, okay? So better things are going to be able to be built if you have stronger iron. If you have James Watt improving upon the steam engine, goods are gonna be able to be moved faster. You have a lot of advancements that are happening at this time. Now, as I said, Britain leads the way here with this. Why Britain? Because Britain has a large supply of, of coal, large supply of iron, and a large number of people. They have great natural resources. We talked a lot about the British at this time. We've mostly dealt with them sort of um, arguably suppressing the rights of the American colonists. And we've talked about the strength of their Navy. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that they're very much advanced uh, industrially. Okay. Uh, they, Britain has a lot of the new technologies. The economic conditions are prime in Britain. 
their overseas trade is excellent. They have money to invest in new ideas and their population demands more goods, okay? So they're gonna need to produce more and trade more. They also have great political and social conditions. They have a stable government, one of the best navies in the world as we've talked about. And change in religious attitudes means that they're encouraging hard work, okay? And more focus on worldly concerns than the afterlife, okay? A real shift from the Middle Ages that we talked about uh, last year, okay? They're more focused on encouraging hard work and the worldly concerns around them than the afterlife, okay? Now we look at a map here of Britain from 1750 to 1850. England was the most industrialized nation in the world, okay? Now we're not gonna get to the point in this class where the Americans are the most industrialized nation in the world, but they sure do hop on the fast track. All of the industrialization that is happening in Great Britain really does inspire the American Industrial Revolution, which happens a little later on. You'll, re you'll learn about that next year, okay? Because um, we're only gonna get to the Civil War in this class here. But this right here is a map of Great Britain here. And you can see the coal mines, the iron factories, and the textile factories. And you have cities with over 100,000 people. Okay, so there's a lot of them. And if you notice, they're all pretty close to water. Okay. Um, so changes in the textile industry. Uh, first industry to be impacted by the Industrial Revolution are textiles, cotton, okay? And the flying shuttle is invented by John Kay. And the flying shuttle allows work to be done faster when making clothes, okay? The spinning jenny, another invention, was in invented by James Hargreaves. And this spins many threads at once, okay? Richard Arkwright invents the water frame, and that used water to power spinning and make it even faster okay so these inventions directly lead to the construction of factories okay and factories are large buildings where a lot of people work okay i'm sure we've all seen what a factory looks like they're very big and a lot of people work in them and the reason that these inventions lead to the construction of factories is because they all allow this work to be done faster Okay, and if you can do the work faster, you're going to want to jam people into these factories, fill them with these inventions to allow maximum output of goods so that you can make the most money possible. Okay, that is what this is all about. And as you guys are going to read in some primary sources for this week, your assignment for the week is two primary sources that you're going to read and answer some questions on. The working conditions in these factories are horrendous, horrendous. Also is the revolution in transportation. Turnpikes and canals are built to move goods faster. You'll notice that theme that everything, making more of things and making them faster is what the Industrial Revolution is all about, okay? Stronger bridges and better harbors are built to expand overseas trading. George Stevenson developed the steam locomotives to carry goods on rails that did not follow rivers. So you no longer need rivers specifically to get goods places faster. Now you have steam engines, trains that are gonna be able to carry a lot of goods and eventually people from point A to point B across the middle of countries, the, the land piece of countries, okay? So that it's not just waterways and you're going a lot faster. Okay, so when we look at Western expansion, people are going mostly in covered wagons and it's very slow and it's very dangerous. Uh, eventually you're gonna see the implement of the building of railroads. It's gonna move people faster. So the world's first major railroad line linked Liverpool to Manchester in England. And in 1807, Robert Fulton built the Clermont, okay? It's a steam powered boat so that they could travel against the current. When you're trading on the Mississippi with the invention of the Clermont, you're no longer looking at just following the Mississippi River down. Mississippi, okay, because you're unable to go back up it due to the currents. But with the invention of these steam powered boats, you're going to be able to go back up. Last year, I was watching a special on Abraham Lincoln. And what he would do is he would trade as a young child, he would trade often on the Mississippi River. And what they would do is they would build boats and they would get in point A where they would start and they would go down the Mississippi. And then they would literally have to leave that boat that they had made, they would have to leave it where it was because they're unable to take it back up the Mississippi. So they would literally leave it and they would walk back. 
up, okay? So with the invention of steam-powered boats, you no longer have that, okay? So what this is gonna do is it's gonna lead to a boom in, in trading, the ability to make goods. So the Industrial Revolution completely changed life for people in the 1800s, okay, in the 19th century. So the hardships, like we were saying, the hardships of early industrial life, and they are many, okay? Factory conditions are horrible. As you can see in this political cartoon, there's what appears to be probably a factory owner here, and he's making goods, but he's literally, there's many people here just going right up, right into this processor and just being spit out here. And the title of this is The Tremendous Sacrifice, okay? And it shows sort of what was done um, the horrendous atrocities that were done to make these goods faster and make them in bulk, okay? So people begin to move from rural areas like farms and the outsides of cities into cities. This is called urbanization, moving into cities. Cities become overpopulated very, very quickly because people are flooding to the cities in search of jobs because people need jobs and there's tons of jobs at factories, okay? Cities become overpopulated. They have air, water, and noise pollutions. Cities become divided between those with money and those who do not have money. And many of them do not have money. Factory workers were crammed into tenements that were overcrowded, dirty, and unsafe. There's no sanitation. There's no sewage systems. And disease spreads rapidly because of the dirty water and the amount of people living in these small tenement buildings, okay? So it's very ironic that you talk about these inventions leading to a decrease in death rate because as it starts to expand and get bigger and you're looking at people working in factories and having to flood into the cities and live in very cramped, unsanitary conditions, you're going to see deaths start to rise because of this mass production of goods and you're working in places that are very unsafe. The working conditions in these places are very, very unsafe. And it's usually done by women and children. Okay. And the living conditions are terrible. There's no sanitation or sewage. I don't need to explain to you how gross and, and what that means. Okay. So factory work differed from farm work in many ways, including hours and pay. A shift in the factory was usually between 12 and 16 hours. Accidents were common because the machines were faulty or because you were just exhausted. Imagine working 16 hours in a place where the air is almost unbreathable. You almost can't see because it's so dark and dusty. You are, but you should not be breathing in the air that's in there. The fibers that are in the air are going directly into your lungs. It's very, very unsafe. Women are hired more than men because they could be paid less for the same amount of work. And women who worked in the factory still had the responsibility to cook, clean, and care for the family after a 12 to 16 hour day. Children were hired, especially orphans, uh, because they could be paid less and could fix some of the machines that men and women couldn't. Literally, they were smaller, they were tiny, they had small hands so they could get their hands into the parts of the machine that were hard to reach, and that meant losing hands and losing fingers very, very often. I'm very sad here to read that it's especially orphans that were hired because they had no family, as bad as this sounds again, that would have cared that they were working in these conditions. They could pay them less because there was no family. Um, very, very sad. Out of this arises a new middle class, uh, and it consists of merchants who invested in factories or skilled artists that were in demand. Their homes were well furnished, they ate and dressed well, and the middle class women were expected to be involved in ladylike activities such as drawing or playing the piano. Families hired home servants to free up the women to participate in these activities. So you're going to start to see a class divide between the lower class and the middle class, and we've seen that a lot in a lot of what we've done. Um, it just looks different now. Okay, so the impact of the Industrial Revolution on the American Industrial Revolution, which we're going to talk about next week, is the American Industrial Revolution happens a little later, but it has these same impacts, okay? And it's going to sort of lead to mass production of things, and it's going to further increase the divide growing between, in our South, we have agriculture and slavery and farming, and in the North, you're going to have industry. 
Okay, so the Industrial Revolution, when it comes to America shortly after it's sort of born in Europe, you're going to see this, these changes that we've been talking about as the nation is growing. You're going to see the inventions like the cotton gin helping speed up production in the south of things like, you know, cotton. And what they're going to do is they're going to need more workers. They're going to need more slaves at these plantations. So it becomes ever important that slavery is kept in these states and in the north you have industry okay and it leads to this divide which is still growing it's another layer in this onion of divide that's growing in the country so the british industrial revolution really leads the way for industrialization in america and again next week we'll look at how america began to industrialize by looking at these new advancements and inventions in america and you guys are going to be looking at specific inventions next week and you're going to be picking one of them to do um a mini report on. You're going to be treating it as if you um, invented it yourself. You're going to tell us about it, tell us how it's going to change lives, how it's important, and all about it. Okay. So there's a video here for you on the Industrial Revolution if you would like to watch it. Okay. It, it will certainly be helpful. Um, let's see. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you over to this week's assignment. If you go here, you will see um, in your remote learning week four, you have two documents here. The first one is the outline of your assignment and the second one is your primary sources. So right here, your mission for week four is to read the primary sources linked below and answer the questions connecting to each source. You can respond to the questions in a number of different ways, as always. Um, so, uh, and those are detailed at the end of the reading. Make sure you watch the video walkthrough of this week's lesson and uh, use the following to help you. This right here will be a link to the video I'm making now. This link right here is to the slideshow that I just walked through. This here is a crash course video on the Industrial Revolution. It gives you some more background. And this right here is the link to the factory workers primary source, which is right here. Okay, so the first one, document A, is a gentleman named Michael Ward. He's a doctor in Manchester, England, and he's being interviewed in 1819 by the House of Lords Committee, which is like the legislature in uh, Great Britain. Okay, so there's some questions and answers here. I want you guys to read through it. It talks about some of the working conditions um, and what's happening in factories at this time. Okay, the second source is... Um, by a gentleman named John Burley, okay? He's born in 1805, lost both of his parents by the age of five and was sent to work uh, at the Bernthal, uh, Berthnall Green Workhouse, okay? He began working at the Cross, uh, Crestbrook factory and John was interviewed about his experiences as a child worker at the mill in 1849, okay? So um, an article on his life is published in the newspaper, the Ashton Chronicle, in May of 1849, and this right here is an excerpt from that article, okay? Now, when you scroll down to the bottom, there's three questions on document A, the interview with Dr. Ward, and there's three questions on the article on John Burley, okay? So I want you to answer these six total questions, and as always, every week, there is going to be different formats for you to answer these, okay? I want you guys to get creative, okay? You can make a slideshow with your answers, okay, in slide form for each one. You can fill in the answers to each question right on here if you'd like, okay? You can do that. But you can also create a video. I mean, it's nice because I get to see you. I get to hear from you. I get to hear you talk about it, okay, um, where you get to tell me about these answers here, okay? So I always appreciate the video. Um, the video updates from you guys. So, and if you have another option you'd like to try, uh, just email me, tell me what it is. Um, there's certainly, this assignment definitely lends itself to political cartoons. So if you would like to get creative with this and make an industrial revolution political cartoon, I would love, 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 love to see it where you could briefly answer these questions, but also draw a picture of what is happening in these factories. Okay. I will certainly accept that. So that's all I have for this week. If you guys have any questions, I will see you all on Wednesday. I will also have office hours on Friday. I hope you had a good weekend. I miss you all. And I hope to see you on Wednesday in class. I hope I kept this video shorter. Um, all right. That's all I got. British Industrial Revolution. All right, next week we do the American. I'll talk to you guys soon.